I had another dream. In a way, it was a little bit similar to the dream that Gwen described. I was uh, driving to work, and I realised I had a fault with my car, which needed immediate attention. I went to a garage. The people there were odd little people, like gnomes. I left my car in their minuscule hands, and then retrieved my car later. But when going to work again, I found they had made it even worse, and as I, and I, and I was unable to get to work that day. So if I take the car as representing my personal vehicle, then my personal vehicle was sabotaged to prevent my getting to work, suggesting, maybe, possibly, an agreed upon sabotage that will prevent me from going to work. Maybe one can be so, one can be so tired of a job as to agree <clears throat> on a life level to allow oneself to suffer an attack that deb debilitates the body, possibly. Or maybe a demonstration that if you keep doing a certain thing, job or whatever, your vehicle and body may be compromised. There you go. It's very good. You saw it, yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> he will. You got it. <laughs> All right then. <laughs> yeah. Next. All right then. Moving on. <laughs> Next. Okay. <clears throat> In my next dream, um, I entered a room, and Dwayne and Kelsey were there. I was about to make my presence known, when Dwayne wished a happy birthday to Kelsey. I realised I hadn't got her a present, so I slunk off before my stinginess could be revealed. <laughs> That's okay, Kevin, we forgive you. Thank you. <laughs> 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 that's okay that's cool well you made it there anyhow so was that it that was it yeah that was a very short one it was just that and i didn't know exactly what to make of it i just thought well it's worth mentioning because it seems sort of quite yeah. fun <laughs> well, oh, it's, it's cute thank you thank you very much and so we all uh well it's a surprise so i'm sure that you probably didn't realize it so again you probably snuck out and got something but just your presence is uh present enough thank you Okay, my stinginess is forgiven. That's a good thing to know. Hmm. Uh, yeah, uh, I had one. I had an experience where, whilst laying on my bed, I was practicing being in a state of awareness, and my view was switching between the physical and the real side. On the real side, I was travelling through space at breakneck speed. A bit like in the Star Wars movies when the ships go into hyperdrive and the stars become streaks of light. <laughs> I was half thinking to myself as I switched back and forth between my room and my travelling that I best pay attention or I might splat onto a planet. <laughs> I was imagining a Kevin-shaped impression on the side of a moon or, or something as a result. Or maybe I might splat on the windscreen of a spaceship and that I might ought to put L plates on my forehead. That can happen. So, but for the most part, you're fine. That's just your awareness going. So you're fine. Good for you. That's yeah, it. it. You did. You did it. <laughs> yeah, it was a very cool experience. I must admit, it was like a, literally was like traveling at uh, supersonic speeds through the through the through the stars. It was very ex exciting and exhilarating. Yes. Here's another dream I had. Um, uh, during this dream. I was watching an advert on the television. It was it was a simple shampoo commercial or something along those lines. But what was most intriguing was that the commercial was accompanied by a song. And the song was the new you you song. And then also the do new you you song with it. Initially I thought that was kind of cool. The promotion of the new and potentially sharing on a global commercial scale. <laughs> But then I'm thinking that perhaps it is a dream where the controllers try to steal the new you, you and the do you, you and attempt to drag it down into the astral and the physical by affiliating it with literal physical stuff like shampoo commercials, attaching ideas and distortions to it. So maybe then, were this to happen, Dwayne may have to change the new you, you and create a new connection to the real universes with the green light from the is and the guides. 
well, it's always oh, another it's always another fun adventure. <laughs> yes, and uh, you know what's interesting along those lines is, is that, uh, and I've said this before, but I'll say it here. It's been a while that. <laughs> When in 2001, when I took the real rock of power, in 2001, I was shown to present the is. Okay. And I recognized that right away to present that. And along the lines here later on, and they'd been working on it for a long time because they always do. So during the Obama administration, all of a sudden, there's this group called ISIS, ISIS. It's very interesting. But in 07, I was shown to change it to the all is. Recently, in the last couple of years, I added uh, three L's and three S's. Okay, so let's see him copy that. So it's very interesting that, yes, uh, you'll see new things and whatever come up. They're using the NU in many products in many places, etc. It's kind of the new thing. It's like new life. That's an old product, uh, new life, etc. But, uh, yes, they will. They will try and dilute it. Uh, it's a tr because they see what we're doing. So it's going to be very interesting. So things will take a transition uh, as we go along. But for now, it's OK. Uh, but that's why uh, it was it was added a particular. In other words, I was shown the new. I added the U. But then later on, uh, Rebazar added the U, U, U to it. So uh, it becomes very interesting. But uh, yeah, the deceptors are always seeing what we're doing. They don't want us around, so they're going to try and dilute it in some way and confuse people, etc. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, you're seeing it on the telly. You know, anything you see on the telly is real, right? So uh, it's kind of giving you a little hint of what can happen, so to pay attention. And that's what happened to the hue, too. But it ran its course uh, through time and space, and finally... Uh, especially when uh, Joni came in with Darwin and Harold, uh, it ran it, it ran aground. Uh, that was it. It became so saturated that uh, it came to the next step, which is fine. So we'll see what happens. Yeah, thank you. Okay, and this other dream that I had. Um, like last week when I encountered the sort of strange individual that reminded me very much of Pennywise the Clown. In this dream, I would meet another similarly aggressive and weird individual. And uh, and this individual made himself known. He was a heavy set, balding person, and he went by the name of Bobby. And like the other individual, he was very abusive and aggressive. Someone that I know on the physical was there with me. And who was also the recipient of, of, uh, of this person's aggressive uh, attentions. However, we would both end up in an open area, and Bobby was there too. And suddenly, a fleet of spaceships filled the sky and started zapping Bobby with layers of fire. Then, when the spaceships had chased him away, um... Lindsay, who was my sister, came and met us both at an airport. We uh, we spoke briefly with each other and we shared our dream. And, uh, and it was quite strange because we were speaking about it as though it was a dream. So we were sort of sharing a dream within a dream. And then the scene would change and I was found myself in a lab area. Um, I had followed the individual I started with the dream initially into this lab area, as he said he had to meet somebody, but I lost him and found myself alone. As I was seeking a way out, I was challenged by a scientist as to my reason for being there. I seemed to then go into a sort of trance state induced by this scientist, like a very deep meditation and she told me all sorts of strange things during this trance state, mentioning medication or something along those lines. But again, the irritation of not being fully able to discern exactly what she said and bring it out into the physical. Then Gwen was there, and she tried to shake me out of this trance, but I just went deeper and deeper, and then I woke up. But when I woke up from this dream, I was paralysed 
and Bobby was still there. The, the strange, weird, creepy individual was still there in my room. And uh, after a few frustrated attempts to free myself from my paralysis, I began to sing the new you, you. The paralysis broke and Bobby faded away. And I was sort of left to wonder if maybe the new you, you singing would break the paralysis that you hear about in alien abduction cases too. Okay, wow, Kevin. That's another Kevin experience, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, I've been meeting lots of strange individuals of late. <laughs> well, it's a movie and a half. So the beginning here with the Bobby, so you, uh, was this, this guy, this guy was, this character was kind of like uh, uh, the It character in the Stephen King movie, The Clown? Yeah, he was like a, a very mean and twisted type individual who had nothing but ill intent for us all. You know, I find that interesting when this uh, movie came out called It, because uh, if you look back at Paul's books, uh, Rebazar always referred to the It as It. And so, see, this again, where things have become twisted. And so, uh, and so you go through all these experiences. But you're, you're a risk taker, and it's okay. See, you're a risk taker, and you're going through these adventures. Most people wouldn't do that. And they wouldn't risk themselves and go through all this and that. It's like an Indiana Jones adventure for you. You like the adventure. You like the risk. And then at, uh, at the end, you might say, you get through it. So, and you're discussing it, uh, you know, with others or yourself or whatever. It doesn't really matter. But you, you like the adventure and you like the risk. And at the, the end result is you were okay. Yeah, recently as well. I mean, for a while, my sister Lindsay wasn't particularly taken with the new presentation. And I found that when I encountered her in my dreams on the real side, she would be very opposed to it even there. In fact, she'd go around screaming and yelling and almost attacking me like some sort of demonic witch. But recently, <laughs> but in more recent times, I found she's a bit more receptive to it on the real side. And in fact, the other day I had a a dream where I was speaking to her about the new presentation and as I said she actually sat down and listened to what I had to say and I believe she took it on board then uh, another dream I would have the next day when I became fully lucid in a dream and Lindsay was there and I, I kept saying to her this is a dream this is a dream over and over again and eventually she became lucid in it as well and then we sort of went off and explored all sorts of various areas and regions of of uh, you know of the uh, real side so I'm sort of wondering at what point that may filter down into the physical when she might uh, become more interested in it on this level of life as well. Uh, funny thing is, my, my daughter's name is Lindsay, too. And uh, in, a, in her past life, which was during this life, uh, she was a higher initiate neck, a very high initiate. Uh, Helen Fry with the wings of the wind out there with uh, uh, in Sedona, etc. And we knew her because I was on a project with Darwin out there and she said she was going to come back as our child. Well, you know, I see my daughter too. We'll just go this way. Uh, that's your sister. But uh, I see her on the real side once in a while. But she she has an attitude too. She she had all that experience during this life, but now she she has an attitude. So, yeah, the personal part for that to come through it's always very interesting how that works and how receptive the individual is. But again, this is where you really have to be the risk taker because most people are self-convinced and they're routine. And uh, for the most part, they don't want to step aside from that routine, even though, you know, there's a part of them that can see it and understand it, but they decide to bring it through. So again, you're, you're seeing the real side where she's, she's, uh, you know, she's she's OK with it uh, real fast. I'll tell an experience uh, a friend of mine had many, many years ago where um, this lady she, she knew had a child and the child was constantly uh, upset and screaming as a young child. And so she went to the real side to look at it and uh, talk to the individual on the real side and said, hey, I'm fine. Everything's fine. And see, that was just the physical part that was of a particular, but uh, the real awareness was okay. So it's interesting, uh, go through this too, with what we're doing certain things uh, galactically with the real side and here, and uh, trying to bring certain things through because it takes agreement. 
and it, it can be very subtle. But, you know, again, it goes along the lines of an intent. You look at your intent. You were intent on on discovering or finding something. Uh, and so things become so. So when she has the intent, in other words, she's listening to you. She can understand. Let's say things are fine. But at the same time, she has to have the intent to bring it through. Do you see? Just like you do. You have the intent to bring it through. It takes that. If, they, if the individual doesn't on all levels, then it doesn't. They, they don't care. So it's there, but they have to nurture it. You see? Okay, yep. Yeah. Um, well, we'll see what happens in the uh, as time goes by with Lindsay. And, uh, but, uh, okay. Um, yeah, there was something I was pondering to do with the deep, dark border. Um, in fact, uh, when I was younger, maybe between the ages of five and ten years old, I would have a reoccurring dream. I would leave my house, then go through various sections <clears throat> that had a colour associated with each. If I remember, the colours were orange, yellow, green, blue and purple, or something along those lines. Then I would reach a black area. This was a very dangerous area. I was accompanied by others throughout this journey, and, and we were told that at this black area... I must move quickly, as there were monsters there, and we had to go now upwards. This I would do, and reach an area above. The colour here was brown, and it was a kind of castle. And I'd meet up with others there, and we put on battle armour. And at this point, however, we were always safe. I must have had this dream dozens of times, as I say, when I was young. If I look at what it might be referencing now from my place of greater awareness and knowledge, the place I started off at, which was the house, would be representing my physical vehicle, the coloured sections, possibly the life levels, and the black space may be the deep dark border, and accompanied by guides across it. But then, these, these guides, if that's who they were, warned of this black space being dangerous and monsters lurking there. I would never actually see one of these monsters, however. So now I must ponder. As we are to understand, the guides take an individual across the deep dark border only if they are sincere, pure, and stand real with life and the guides, and recognise their real intent and are aware enough to perceive their way to this point. Is there something more in this deep dark border than just a crossing over place? Maybe a kind of final test, constructed by the is, to ensure all attachments and agreements are no more. I keep thinking, as an example, why Heather reached this place, a place one could only reach if all emotional attachments had been severed, all tap lines removed and all agreements dissolved, that bind one to the physical realm. Why she then had doubts and reservations and turned away? Is there a kind of a secret final test that can't be di divulged? A demonstration or experience personal to an individual? A little like the secret word that you need to pass the fifth governor of the etheric level. Certain things kept quiet, or the vetting process for unsavoury characters wouldn't be as effective. I'm imagining now a final test that puts one in a very dark place. Perhaps it brings to the fore the kind of self-imposed restrictions and ideas that had been prevalent in that person's long history of millions of lives. This may sound a little funny, but what if Heather was confronted with an experience in the deep dark border where she witnessed harm to her children, and this would be so lest she returned to creation? The children would be under no threat, but a test where it would be proven as to her detachment and indifference, and as such she failed and went back. The monsters I was told about then, that are in this deep dark border, are then our own monsters, our internal demons, the final confrontation with what has been, with what, with, with what, what has haunted us most of our lives. But 
What of the deep, dark border? This dead space. It's not creation. It's not the real universes. Can it be that something else lurks there? After endless possible failures at the deep, dark border, the fear and anxiety and trepidation that many individuals have experienced has given rise to something monstrous, an aberration, a subconscious creation made manifest like those that roam the astral from the subconscious outpourings of all the individuals in creation, can this aberration have grown out of all proportion, a final guardian unspoken about, that is preventing people passing far more in this final test than was originally intended, to the point that it may even infect those that it turns away, fills them with hate and animosity, and sets them on a path where they become the tyrants of today, can we go as far as to say that this creature could be the anti-is and it has its own agents working for it too, like, like anti-guides? Maybe some of the twisted creatures I've seen in my dreams of late that appear to have abilities and creation-affecting capabilities much like the real guides. For how can there be such extremes between nice folks and child-eating, mass-murdering individuals? Unless something sees the potential for corruption and sparks it, encourages it, rewards it. The ante is at work, living in the dead zone of the deep dark border, out of control, and presenting a blown out of proportion final test. Because I can't shake the impression something has gone slightly wrong in the whole process. And uh, maybe that's another reason why epochs implode to recorrect distortions in the process set forth by the is. Is that part one? <laughs> <laughs> you best hope that's all of it. <laughs> that's terrific. I would imagine that your uh, parents, Gwen and Peter, don't watch much TV. They just sit and listen to you, right? <laughs> Those are good stories. There's different ways to look at this, but, uh, you know, as we go through this process and you were young and I, I had so many experiences when I was young, too, like that. And you, you don't know what's going on, of course, because you you need some information, you need some knowledge and, and, and many things you need to experience things. And so as you go through all of this and let's say it's the deep, dark border or whatever, and you get to a point where there's a castle and you have armor, etc. So it's almost like, OK. Now that you've had these experiences, you're ready to go back, uh, you know, down, you might say, and figure it out and get into, you might say, the battle. It's, it is a battle. It's a battle with ourselves to recognize these things. And when you were talking about uh, the monsters lurking or whatever, there's a good old movie. It was in the 60s, 70s. It was uh, basically 60s called Forbidden Planet. Uh, with Leslie, Leslie Nielsen and Jack Kelly. And uh, it goes over uh, subconscious id monsters, etc., like that. It's very good, very good movie. There's other ones too. But uh, uh, yeah, on the real side in creation, anything can happen. And we have a lot stored there because there's a whole lot to us that we can't even imagine. So you, you see little uh, glimpses of it, etc. But eventually you get focused to where you can handle it and, and see through it, etc. These things that we've created. But we needed to create these things because it wakes us up. So at, at whatever point we decide to wake up and, and go into it, then, then eventually it becomes okay. Something along those lines, Kevin. Yes, it all leads to the is when we decide it does. Yeah. There are a lot of funny commercials on the real side, too. Yes, thank you, Kevin. You kids are wonderful. Always an adventure. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much, Dwayne and everybody, for coming, and we will see you next time.